1863, Cambodia became a French protectorate. France come to protect us, protect our land. But inside of our land that you asked me to say, they come to explore us too. In 1941, the French decided to unite the Norodom and Sisawak branches of the royal family, appointing an unknown 19-year-old who was related to both lines, Norodom Sihanouk. They believe that since he's young, it's easy to control him. But they, they make a mistake because he uh, uh, was a lot of problem. <laughs> the French had appointed someone who would become a nationalist hero and who would dominate political life in the country for the next 50 years. Post-World War II, the French filtered back into Cambodia after the defeat of the occupying Japanese forces. Elections were held for the first time, and the Democratic Party drafted a new constitution that estranged King Sihanouk from the political process. This enraged the young king. Sihanouk began a long process of gaining the people's support and opposing French rule. He felt that he knew best for Cambodia. And so when you had elections, when you had a political process, it was always meant if it did not produce the results that he thought were best, then he would try to nullify it. I mean, that was fundamentally his, his view. During the 1955 elections, ballot boxes were reported missing. Opposition leaders allegedly harassed, critical newspapers shut down. It was a model of authoritarian politics that continues in Cambodia today. However, Sihanouk was genuinely popular and Cambodia became relatively well off. In the 1960s, events taking place in neighboring countries threatened Cambodia's stability. Sihanouk boldly declared Cambodia neutral in the Cold War, but it teetered on the brink of communism as the influence of China and North Vietnam grew. I think Americans accuse him of being the Red Prince, but uh, he has to work for the interests of Cambodia, not for the interests of uh, either camp, the, the communists or the, or the US. In 1963, Sihanouk took the bold step of cutting off American economic assistance, thereby allying himself in their minds with the communist side. Whenever you see discussion of Sihanouk, you always see the word mercurial, right? I mean, it's always used to refer to it. And he was. Everybody, even the most sympathetic observers of Sihanouk's time in power, have to recognize that this very, very strong personalizing of any perceived insult, any perceived slight, that this really, um, this, this made a lot of his policy stands very problematic. He wanted to see himself as a statesman, as someone that was going to be respected and be able to kind of play with the big boys. But he did not have the temperament for that. He didn't have the sort of self-restraint for that. Sihanouk became increasingly vain and bored with politics. And in a bizarre career move for a former king and current prime minister, decided to throw all his energy into directing and starring in his own feature films. I used to read international press. Some article will mention uh, Sihanouk by name, or sometimes they call him a playboy. I was not sure at that time what is a playboy is all about. I was confusing that the playboy may be a boy that likes to play with many things. And while Sihanouk was playing at being a movie star, by the end of the 1960s, the Vietnam War was threatening to spill into Cambodia. Americans were in trouble in Vietnam, and Cambodia was supportive of the North Vietnamese and the Viet Cong. So the Americans had to do something to ensure that Cambodia stopped supporting the North Vietnamese and the uh, Viet Cong. So they had to overthrow Norodom Sihanouk. In March 1970, while Sihanouk was traveling abroad, military commander Lon Nol staged a coup d'etat against the government. Many, including Sihanouk himself, 
believed that the coup was sponsored by the CIA. The Londonians, uh, they uh, were very ambitious. They uh, London wanted to replace me as a head of state. And uh, the Londonians, uh, since they were very corrupted, they wanted to be uh, more corrupted without uh, uh, being disturbed by the uh, uh, blames uh, from Siharu, etc., etc. So they decided together, Lonol, Serimata, uh, Nixon, and Kissinger uh, to <laughs> uh, wipe me out. Sihanouk was desperate to return to power and allied himself with a growing band of communists who were taking over the Cambodian countryside, the Khmer Rouge. The people supported the Khmer Rouge because of him. It was a common struggle. He did not call the, the Khmer Rouge to join him. He called for all the Cambodians to join his struggle against the, what they call at the time the imperialist Americans. They were accusing our former king as part of the reason why the Khmer Rouge came to power in the first place. Uh, without CNU support, this killing field would not ever happen. Sihanouk believed that if the Khmer Rouge were able to seize power, he would be reinstalled as king. This proved to be without foundation. On April 17, 1975, the Khmer Rouge invaded Phnom Penh. The Khmer Rouge declared Cambodia had entered year zero and that 2,000 years of history had ended. So had money, markets, education, religion, books, and property. It was arguably the most radical, ill-conceived communist revolution in human history. Having previously courted the Khmer Rouge's support, Sihanouk found himself betrayed. He was arrested in the royal palace. Phnom Penh at that time, no people, no crowded. So he cannot see anything. About the people in the countryside, he cannot view at all. For many Cambodians, the suffering and horror of the labor camps in the countryside lives on today. In 1979, the Khmer Rouge sent Sihanouk to Beijing as their ambassador. The Vietnamese invaded Cambodia in order to oust the Khmer Rouge, who fled to the countryside. Sihanouk was to remain in China for the next 12 years, waiting for his people to embrace him as their leader again. Most Cambodians welcomed the Vietnamese forces with open arms as a relief from the horrors of a genocidal regime. Exiled in China, Sihanouk refused to negotiate with the Vietnamese invaders, people he had previously considered allies. You do have this very clear sense that the Vietnamese betrayed the Cambodians by invading and do, doing all of these things, however justified that invasion might have been. And I think he did have a feeling that the old sort of camaraderie which he had enjoyed, enjoyed with the Vietnamese leaders back in the early 70s, that that was gone. The Vietnamese installed a young former Khmer Rouge commander as prime minister. Hun Sen has remained in power to this day. The Vietnamese finally left Cambodia in 1989. After a period of reconciliation managed by Sihanouk and the United Nations, elections were called in 1993. The elections of 1993 were considered free and fair, and it was decided that Cambodia would have not one, but two prime ministers, Hun Sen and Prince Ranarit, and that the country would return to a constitutional monarchy under the unifying influence of Norodom Sihanouk. Throughout the 1990s, King Sihanouk's influence waned, while Prime Minister Hun Sen's power grew. He was unhappy for so many years. You will see that uh, from 93 on, you will heard from time to time, he put up the statement critical of government. 
and always compare the regime or the government to the past. Elections take place, but voters are allegedly coerced into voting for Hun Sen's People's Party. Opponents are said to have been undermined and tortured. Cambodia had finally found peace under a monarchy again, but it's peace at a price.